sea. The ocean. Millions of square miles. Three quarters of our Earth's surface. And except for the narrow coastal margin of continents or islands, the open seas belong to no nation. For as long as we've lived on this planet, going to sea has brought challenge, excitement, adventure. I am a sailor, and these are the ships of the United States Navy at sea. Our ships are many things to us and to the nation we serve. These are cities on the move. These are places of work, arsenals of destruction. These are schools and homes to us for months at a time. Going to sea, it's been a place of serving and of sacrifice for millions of us. The sailors of the United States Navy on a journey. This is part of the journey. Recruits being pushed to perform. I want anybody else comes back in one minute. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. These young men and women are becoming the newest members of the United States Navy. They've come here to the shores of Lake Michigan, along with more than 50,000 others each year, to grow, to learn, and to prepare to serve. Navy recruits. A cross-section of our country. In educational achievement, in ethnic, racial, and gender diversity. They may not know it yet, but soon they will become a part of our history, our heritage. It's the United States Navy and a new century. Over 370,000 men and women using knowledge skill and experience to ensure that our Navy can serve the needs of our nation. Our Navy defends the United States through threat of force or its actual use. Our Navy promotes America's ideals, global peace and stability. 24 hours a day, working with technology, using our intelligence and standing for the ideals of honor, courage, commitment. We are the proud sailors of the United States Navy. And this is our story. Our Navy story begins in the 1770s with the struggle of American colonists to end British domination. Our Navy's birth date, October 13, 1775, when the Continental Congress votes to purchase and arm two vessels to support the rebellion. On July 4th, 1776, we formally declared our independence from Great Britain. 
the American Revolution had officially begun. To support the war, Congress had already authorized procurement of 13 new frigates and other vessels. The Continental Navy was not intended to seek engagements with British warships, but to protect our own supply ships and to capture those carrying provisions to the British. To lure the British Navy away from our American coast, we strike far across the Atlantic, off the coast of England, and pull off an impressive victory. The crew of our frigate, Bonham Richard, commanded by John Paul Jones, eventually captures the much more powerful British warship Serapis in a fierce battle continuing far into the night. Our ship is close to sinking when the British captain asks if Jones is ready to surrender. I have not yet begun to fight, Jones shouts back, and we fight on to victory. After five years of setbacks as well as successes, our independence was won at Yorktown, Virginia in October 1781. Combined American and French naval and land forces cut off Lord Cornwallis's army. British troops surrendered to General Washington. We would soon become the United States of America. Merchant ships of the new United States began showing the stars and stripes on the seas around the globe. But when our Yankee merchant vessels sail to the Mediterranean, we are easy targets for the ruthless Corsairs of North Africa. They capture our ships and hold our crews and passengers for unbelievable ransom demands. President George Washington and Congress were outraged. And to stop the attacks, they authorized the construction of six fast frigates. The first to be built, the United States, the Constellation, and the Constitution. These new American ships were the most powerful of their class in the world. We soon dispatched several expeditions to deal with the Corsairs. And one operation is legendary. It was after the Corsairs captured our frigate Philadelphia. Young U.S. Navy Lieutenant Stephen Decatur and a party of 80 volunteer sailors and marines undertook a daring mission to prevent Philadelphia from being used by the enemy. At night, they disguised their boat and themselves as local traders and stealthily slipped into the enemy harbor. With the odds against them, they attacked and overpowered the Corsairs. They set the Philadelphia ablaze, and they escaped without losing a man. These victories of the new United States Navy were the result of the bravery, dedication, and the sailing and fighting skills of our American sailors. Most of our sailors are young. They are all volunteers. And they spend a lot of time practicing sailing, gunnery, and other skills. To make or take in sail, top men scramble aloft in every kind of weather. Edging out onto yard arms a hundred feet or more above the deck. Lying across the yard, they use one hand to reach for lines that hold a sail furled to its spar or to gather in salt stiffened canvas. 
while hanging on for their life with the other hand. Others handle the halyards and braces that trim the sails. At the time of battle, sailors are assigned to gun crews in the most difficult and incredibly dangerous life and death tasks. In the early years of the 1800s, the British were stopping our merchant ships at sea. They were seizing our cargoes and forcing our sailors into service on British naval vessels. Three decades after the revolution, we were again at war with Britain, fighting for free trade and the rights of sailors. In that war of 1812, the powerful British Navy had our Navy both outnumbered and outgunned. But the superior seamanship and gunnery of American sailors gave the Navy and especially the Constitution, important victories over the British, and an end to the war in 1815. Constitution's wooden sides had proved so strong that enemy cannon shot literally bounced off, and her crew and the nation gave her the name Old Ironsides. It's the name she retains to this day. We were the sailors of a new and proudly independent United States of America. But many of our ways of doing things and much of our language of sailing and fighting had come from the British Navy. We learned words we'd be using more than 200 years later, like quarterdeck, blue jacket, scuttlebutt, bosun's mate, yeoman, quartermaster, birthing. Sailor life in those years of sail was not the best. Most of us had been pulled right off the street at harbors all over the world, recruited for one cruise at a time. Aboard ship, we slept and ate in cramped, dark, and almost airless quarters, next to cannons we'd one day be firing and maybe dying beside. We were punished by floggings for any kind of offense. We liked our daily ration of rum, but there were diseases. The food was pretty bad, and we'd usually be at sea for more than a year. What the Navy needed most from us was our muscle and courage. But in the future, a lot of that would change. We'd have more of a chance to use our brains as well as our brawn. 